Hey howdy guys. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto gets 6 passage mode early, this is part 1, and if you want part 2, then complete 100 likes on this. Also I request you to check out author of this story. Name of this fanfic is, The Sage of Konoha by The Tale Titan 72. And if you want to listen uncensored of Anko plan to have wild harem with Naruto, then check out my Patreon link in description. Let's jump into video. It was a peaceful morning in Kanahagakur as the people carried on their daily lives. Neighbors greeted each other with a wave and a smile, and strangers acknowledged one another with a nod of their head. People milled about in the crowded supermarket as people were buying food, browsing the stalls, or even just talking with friends. At back here. The cry of the Anbu was a regular occurrence, and only a few people lifted their heads to watch a streak of orange flash overhead. Oh great it's at it again. When will it just disappear? I hope they beat it to a pulp when they catch it. The grumbles were overshadowed by the orange blur's boisterous laughter. If he didn't already have a bad reputation then many people would have probably said that the boy had a heartwarming laugh with a smile to match. However he was always playing pranks. The day he had done the impressive feat of sneaking into the Anbu locker room and rigged up several paint-filled gas release pellets. Any Anbu present were now painted orange as they chased the delinquent down. The Anbu never guessed to check the fence as they went speeding by. Part of the fence dropped away to reveal a laughing blonde as he pointed at the direction the Anbu just ran. His senses began to warn him his death was approaching, so he took off towards the forest of death, the best place for him to hide. He ignored Aruka's cries and angry shouts behind him as he ran through the forest as fast as possible. He continued laughing until part of the ground opened up into a small tunnel, and he slid several hundred feet before being dumped unceremoniously on the ground. Ow. The blonde began to take in his surroundings as his survival instincts took over. A sudden burst of light illuminated the room which caused Naruto's eyes to focus on the crystal with the swirling colors. Naruto, being naturally curious, got up and brushed himself off before approached the strange crystal. He felt an indescribable feeling of familiarity at the pulling sensation the crystal gave off. The next thing he knew, Naruto had lifted his hand which he just brought to rest on the crystal. A massive flash of light filled the room as Naruto felt himself leave that dimension. Where am I? You are in a place that is beyond human comprehension. Who are you? I am most commonly referred to by you shinobi as the sage of the six paths. Why wow, why am I here? You seem to have found my crystal. I'm glad it was you Naruto Uzumaki. I have been watching you for the longest time, and I feel that you deserve my gift. Ift. My powers. Every single last bit of my powers and memory now goes to you. It is up to you to achieve what I have failed. And that is. Peace. Achieve peace and you will be greater than I can ever hope to be. Good luck Naruto. The beam of sheer power tore through the ground and shot into the sky. Many people were frightened by the sudden appearance of such a strange phenomenon. It was probably the demon brat. The venerable humors of agreement ended the discussion swiftly. Now if only they knew how right they were. Naruto felt felt his entire body being restructured and improved. His small muscles were now developed and he put on some extra height. He looked lean, strong, and one might dare to say predatory after his baby fat disappeared. He went into the hole as a young boy, but now he looked much more like a young man. Once Naruto felt like he was no longer burning alive, he turned his attention to the box next to the pedestal where the crystal once was. He opened the box and found the sage's robe inside. The he threw the material on and found that it seemed to adjust to his size. The robe had white sleeves and shoulders while the rest was gray. A sash-like red belt ran around his waist. Naruto noticed that the robe perfectly revealed the six new Magatamas that were burnt into his chest, much like how the sage's necklace appeared. The Magatamas were all the same color. Unlike the sage's Sharingan red color they were a deep blue color, much like his eyes. The staff was the next thing Naruto noticed. Like the clothes, once he grabbed it the staff shrunk to the appropriate size for him. He quickly placed the staff on his back. He then started to feel a slight tingling in his eyes. At first the blonde didn't think much about it, but now he was experiencing some of the most incredibly unbearable pain he had ever felt. The poor genin collapsed onto his knees as he frantically clutched his head, hoping that the pain would stop. The pain finally subsided, and Naruto was able to stumble to his feet. He quickly grabbed the box with the robes in it and climbed out of the hole. He was happy that the staff didn't clank around unless he wanted it to. He heard the sounds of the anbu on their way, and he quickly disappeared into the forest as he made his way home. Later that night Naruto gazed into the mirror in complete shock and fascination at what he saw. His pupil seemed to have shot out its outer layers, as a ripple pattern now was present in his blue eyes, along with three tomo on the first ripple. He could feel ungodly amounts of power coursing through his body as he thought about the sage's words. All of your abilities huh? He muttered aloud to no one in particular. 
He was also having clear flashbacks as parts of the sage's life played through Naruto's mind as it tried to separate the memories. He was currently watching the birth of the Biju. At the end of their creation, Naruto couldn't help but shed a tear at what happened to them. Not long after their creation they were forced to watch their father figure succumb to old age. Naruto didn't know why, but he felt a strange attraction to the Nine Tails, Kurama. It was like he had known the fox all of his life. Naruto was wrenched from his thoughts as he let out a loud yawn. He dragged his tired ass to bed so he could sleep on all of the information he had gathered that day. Morning. God how Naruto hated morning. He was surprised to find his eyes flutter open at the first glimpse of sunlight. At four in the morning. No I'm going back to bed. If only I had shudders. God do I wish I had shudders. Naruto never even noticed his chakra flare up and could only sigh contently when his brand new shutters had closed. When did he get shutters? He suddenly had another one of the sage's memories pop up in his mind as he seen the sage use a strange technique. The name suddenly flared to life in Naruto's head. The creation of all things. Wow. Naruto had just used the technique that created the Biju to create some window shutters to keep the sun out of his eyes. He rolled his eyes at his own laziness and got up. He was about to grab his orange jumpsuit when his eyes suddenly fell on the closed box. He opened it once again and removed the robe only to have a scroll fall out. Gently setting the robes aside, Naruto quickly bent down to retrieve the scroll that fell on the ground. He felt that same sense of familiarity with the scroll as he opened the paper. He instinctively put his hand on the kanji and pumped some chakra into it. A poof of smoke erupted from the scroll, and there was now a katana on the scroll. The katana's sheath was purple with a ring of three tomo at the top, three in the middle, and three on the bottom. The handle of the blade was wrapped in golden wrappings. Upon grabbing the hilt he found the wrappings were as soft and smooth as silk. He drew the blade and found he instantly knew how to use it. It was strange already knowing how to use things he was just discovering. The blade had several words carved into the blade. This blade shall only be wielded by the savior of the shinobi world. Naruto just read the words over and over to himself as he walked to his bathroom now dressed in the sage's robes. He admired the design on the back of the robes. The Rinnegan was positioned over the center column of Tamo, while the Tamo themselves were arranged in a 3x3 three three pattern. Speaking of Tamo. Naruto desperately searched the sage's memories for an explanation of why he had the Sharingan combined with the Rinnegan. As he thought about it the answer became suddenly clear to him. The Rinnegan had been altered by some force within Naruto's own body that must have somehow added a form of Ten Tails Chakra to it, so he had the start of the Jiubi's eye. Naruto, satisfied with that answer, focused on trying to make his eyes go back to normal with no such luck. Then a sudden mischievous grin spread across his face. They had all heard the stories about the god of shinobi, but those stories never told what the god looked like. In fact, no one except scholars of the subject could even guess at what he may have looked like. Naruto chuckled at his good fortune. Let everyone see it. I'm about to blow their fucking minds anyways. With his answer being set in stone Naruto went back and sealed both the sword and the staff into the scroll which he then concealed inside one of the robe's secret interior storage seals. God do I love this robe. Naruto couldn't get enough of the confused looks the villagers all gave each other as Naruto proudly flaunted his new attire, along with his new eyes. Only a few people noticed the eyes as the rest were focused on the clothing. Many people's eyes lingered on the white cape-like cloak segment that held the intricate design on his back. Another great deal of people found their eyes lingering on the Magatama markings on his chest. When he finally reached the academy he walked into the classroom and was surprised to find he was the first one there. He slowly took his seat in the back and began to lean back in his chair while waiting for the others to arrive. After 15 minutes of waiting they all began to trickle in. Their reactions were priceless. Naruto sat leaning in his seat as everyone who came into the classroom just stopped to gawk at the dope who was actually early. Like many of the villagers most of his classmates' eyes did a quick sweep of his new look before many eyes settled on the pattern on his chest. He casually stood up and whistled as he walked up to the board, grabbed an eraser, positioned it in the barely open door, and walked back to his seat like nothing happened. He could feel their gazes on his back, but he didn't care as he sat down and tilted his chair again. Well are you guys done staring at me? The blonde smirked as they all snapped out of their trances and tuned their seats. He still did notice the glances he received from multiple girls in the class, including the pink-haired angel that sat next to him. Sakura continued to gawk at Naruto's new outfit and the body he had kept hidden all of this time. He's actually hot. Sakura knew the thought was shared by almost every girl in the class as they all stared at Naruto, some with stars in their eyes. Haruka walked into the classroom only to have an eraser drop on his head. Okay who his voice caught in his throat as he seen the hand of the one and only Naruto Uzumaki go up. After several minutes of shocked silence Haruka cleared his throat before he spoke again. Then Naruto it's good to see you on time. 
Okay class, today we're going to start your final exams. We will do writing, physical, and finally jutsu in that order. Naruto blew through the writing portion of the test. It was really easy when you had the memories of the man that created the shinobi way at your disposal. Next was shuriken and kunai throwing. Naruto crushed Sasuke's score, earning yet another glance of disbelief from everyone, which just caused him to smirk even more. Finally was the part Naruto had been waiting for. Sparring. Any volunteers? Both Sasuke and Naruto stepped forward like usual. The fangirls started to cheer on Sasuke. Pick his butt Sasuke. Yeah. Wipe the floor with th dope. Naruto noticed Sakura stood by Hinata instead of with the usual group of fangirls and actually gave Naruto a supporting smile. Maybe she finally wants to get to know me. Again. Sasuke shot forward with the intent of putting everything into one punch to end it quickly. His hand shot forward and made contact with Naruto's open palm. He didn't even pay attention as he spaced out while dodging of Sasuke's attacks. The Ichiha was starting to become angry and his attacks got more erratic. Finally the Ichiha snapped. After so many failed attempts he resorted to his one main jutsu. Pain. Gakaku no jutsu. Naruto didn't seem to care about the fiery ball of death hurtling his way. Finally he sighed and looked at the fireball with a look of absolute boredom. Suiten. Suryaden no jutsu. The bored tone in which he said it caused the Ichiha to grit his teeth. The water dragon seemed to materialize out of the air. Its sheer size made Sasuke's fireball look like a pea. The dragon roared before it rushed towards the stunned Ichiha. The boy closed his eyes in preparation for the strike when he heard water beginning to splash to the ground. He heard a collective gasp when a cold metallic object was held to his throat. He opened his eyes to find himself staring down the blade of a very impressive katana. He yield. Without waiting for an answer the blonde sheathed the blade and it disappeared in his robes again as he turned around. The Ichiha, seeing an opening, charged at the blonde student with a kunai. Naruto smiled as Sasuke fell furred. Hook, line, and sinker. At the last moment the blonde backfilt over the charging Ichiha and grabbed the black-haired boy by the shoulders as he twisted him around. Once they were face to face Naruto cocked a fist back and let it fly. He was rewarded by the satisfying smashing sound as Sasuke was sent through a tree. The silence was incredible as he walked off the sparing field to stand next to Sakura and Hinata. Sakura was the first to break the silence. That was awesome Naruto. Sasuke-kun. I have never seen that level of fighting from academy students. You two are strong. The sole clap of Sakura's was joined by a timid Hinata. The two clapping started a chain reaction of clapping. No one ever noticed how Naruto got to be standing by Sasuke, but his next action shocked everyone including Aruka. Naruto stood above the beaten Achiha with his hand extended. To be more specific, his pointer and middle fingers were extended in the friendship sign. Sasuke smirked and took Naruto's offer before being assisted to his feet by the blonde. They gave each other a small smile that only they noticed before they separated. The jutsu portion was also easy as Naruto created enough shadow clones to fill the entire testing room. Later when class rank was announced, Naruto was still declared as dead last due to his slacking during the year. But he didn't care. He passed and that was all that mattered. Team 7 is Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, and Sasuke Chia. The night was clear and the stars were out. Naruto was laying down on the branch he occupied and stared into the millions of shiny dots. He had taken up this habit right after they began the journey to the wave. Naruto used this time to relax and sort out the massive jumble of memories that ran rampant through his mind. He stared up at the moon when an image flashed to the front of his mind. He seen a great battle being fraught as the sage confronted a massive beast with one eye. Then, just as fast as it appeared, the image was gone. Naruto sighed as the memory disappeared. After seeing that flash of an image he wanted to know more about what happened. He heard a sound down by the fire. He saw Sakura through one of his clone's eyes. He noticed her eyes were turned in the direction of the real one as she looked at his prone body. He noticed her subtle sigh before she returned her gaze to Sasuke and half-heartedly tried to start a conversation. H.N. The usual response took all of the wind out of Sakura's sails as she began to trace a pattern in the dirt while staring into the flames. He returned his gaze back to the sky while still listening for any sounds of an approaching enemy. The mission had shot up from a C-rank mission all the way to an A-rank with the appearance of the Demon Brothers. The blonde sighed as he thought back to that encounter. Flashback begins. Naruto still felt the wave's excitement still coursing through his body. Although he didn't show it, the blonde was doing mental front flips, back flips, hell even side flips at the feeling of finally leaving Konoha for the first time. His demeanor suddenly changed to being completely alert on the inside, while he displayed complete ignorance on the outside as he passed the puddle. He noticed Kakashi's minute nod as he continued to read his book. At his signal, Naruto continued acting as though he didn't notice the two figures rise from the puddle. 
He played his part perfectly as he watched on in shock as the chain tore Kakashi to pieces. Sakura froze up and Sasu took a step back as the two figures turned to the three genin. Naruto surprised everyone by smirking and stepping forward while he cracked his stiff neck. Finally. Something to do around here. The blonde-haired genin nearly bounced up and down in excitement. Sakura please protect Izuna-san. Sasu protect Sakura. The Ichiha began to step forward to help Naruto fight when he felt an invisible force stop him. You will listen to me and you will protect Sakura. The Ichiha didn't know why, but he felt himself walk back to stand beside Sakura. Now then, shall we begin? The Uzumaki smirked when the two men charged. Naruto yawned as the chain began to wrap around the board genin. Sakura and Sasuke watched with a sort of sick fascination as Naruto smirked We the chain began to get pulled together with the intention of slicing him apart. Naruto. Shinra Tensei. The invisible shockwave ripped the chain apart link by link and threw the two Misinin into two trees. The forest shook as several trees collapsed due to missing their bases now. Naruto knew the fight wasn't over and had his katana in his hands before anyone knew he had moved. One of the two came from his left, and Naruto dodged a pathetically slow attempt at a slash, before he rammed the hilt of his blade into the ninja's stomach, hard enough to make the man cough blood. Naruto planted his hand on the back of the doubled-over ninja and leapt into the air, using the man as a balance and pivot point. Naruto bent his planted arm before H attempted to spring into the air using the man. Shinra Tensei. The wave forced the man into the ground as it propelled Naruto into the air. He brought his blade so the point lined up with the fallen man's chest and let gravity do the rest. From the speed he was falling it felt like butter as his blade slid effortlessly through the man. Without hesitation Naruto lifted his hand and pointed it at the dead man's comrade. He lifted his sword so it pointed right at the man before he spoke. Bancho Tenen. An invisible force pulled the man off of his feet and right towards his impending doom. The last emotion to cross the man's eyes was one that almost looked like he was begging for his life. Naruto ignored the look and pulled the man straight onto the blade. He dumped the corpse onto the ground and looked at it with disgust and turned to his comrades to speak. The only thing worse than choosing a mission over the lives of your friends is to abandon your village altogether. To kill your former friends for money and nothing more. Missing Nin are some of the lowest scum on this earth. He then turned to face the forest and spoke once more. Okay Kakashi you can come on out. Then flashback. Naruto was glad he had killed those two ex Miss Ninja, but something felt wrong. He was glad yet he felt disgusted at himself and his actions. He needed to sort through the feelings and to do that required time. So he took the first post for the night. He noticed that Sasuke had fallen asleep during his little daydream, and Sakura kept glancing at Naruto, then back to Sasuke, and then back again. She was biting her lower lip as if she was in deep thought. He thought she looked indecisive about something, but he just let it go. It didn't matter. He still had his own problems to sort through. Sighing, he laid his head back down and slipped into sleep. If anything entered or even got near the camp, his cage bunshin would hold them off while he got to the area. Sadly, his cage bunshin were unable to hold the special dejutsu abilities that he had, except for the linked vision. No matter what his clone seen he could see too. Satisfied with his security grid, the blonde drifted off into a nice deep sleep. Danger. The blonde genin snapped his head up to see a very angry Sakura approaching him. How many times do I have to tell this baka to wake up? She cocked her rage-fueled fist back, but halted the punch when his rippled blue eyes met her beautiful emerald eyes. She felt her anger just fall away under his sleepy gaze. She couldn't meet his eyes so instead her eyes locked onto his whiskers. Eventually she had traced and memorized each one. With her focus no longer being held she looked back into his eyes just in time to see a powerful emotion submerge deep within those blue doored vaults called eyes. With only a brief glimpse, she was unable to accurately analyze what she had just seen. She continued to puzzle over it until the blonde genin got up and stretched. He wore no shirt as he slept, so Sakura was a little shocked to find herself running her eyes over his toned body. He was strong, really strong. All of the muscle he had was crammed into his lean form and seemed to just increase the definition of the muscles he already had. Her eyes eventually landed on the strange new markings on his chest that he would openly flaunt with a robe he had taken up wearing since then. She was so focused on the Magatama that she failed to notice the growing smirk on his face. See anything you like Sakura-chan. Her eyes snapped up to his, and she noticed the laughter that continued to dance behind his eyes. Before she could clobber him Kakashi stepped in and spoke. Let's go everyone we have to make it there by today. Hi. The squad quickly got ready before they all took off. After several hours of walking Naruto was sufficiently bored. He couldn't find anything to do either so he was literally stuck in his perpetual boredom. His eyes widened in excitement as entertainment flew their way in the form of a giant blade. The genin decided that he would play along this time and see how good his teammates were. 
he smiled as hit the ground while quickly pulling the others down with him. The fight goes the same as the show or manga, because Naruto acts how he would have to test his team's skills. Uh, so Zabuza Mamachi is after us too. This is going to be an interesting mission. It has got to be an S rank by now. He glanced at the unconscious body of his teacher before turning his gaze on his slumbering team. They had finally reached Azuna's house, and after a quick meal everyone had passed out. Everyone except the blonde. He tossed and turned trying to get comfortable. Finally he sat up in a lotus position to meditate in the hopes of calming himself to the point of exhaustion. He opened his eyes and found himself standing before a massive cage held shut by a tag with a word seal on it. A single red eye with a slit for a pupil opened, and a rumbling voice caused the ground to vibrate. So the prisoner finally gets to meet the jailer. The wickedly toothy grin was slowly revealed in the dark depths of the cage. The day is the day that Kakashi Sensei predicted that Zabuza will attack again. The pin cat inhaled deeply and relished the feeling of fresh air before she continued. To be honest, I'm scared. She glanced to either side of her to see if either of her teammates had even heard her. She noticed Sasuke was deep in thought and was completely ignoring. Figures. Sakura had slowly began to see Sasuke for who he was, not who she thought he was. The godlike picture of Sasuke Chiha had started to crumble that day at the academy. That day, when Naruto had thoroughly beaten and humiliated the Achiha, she seen who he was. At first the smirk on his face had almost looked like a smile but his eyes. His eyes held an unfathomable amount of hatred for the one who had just beat him. After that she began to pay closer attention to Sasuke without such a massive amount of the fangirlism she had held before. Each time Sasuke was beaten his eyes told the same story. Hatred. It was such a strong hatred too. Next her eyes landed on the Yuzumaki beside her. During the same time that Sasuke began to interest her less the opposite occurred for the blonde. Recently, ever since she began to keep an open mind, Naruto had impressed her over and over again. Between the unrealistic promises he somehow keeps all the way to how kindly he treated her, despite how she used to treat him. Sakura never really understood, now that she looked at it, why the adults always treated Naruto like the plague. He was such a kind-hearted person. Yet somehow this selfless angel of a human that is her teammate had earned the nickname Demon Boy from the adults. Yet, even after he had been struck in front of her, he just picked his smiling self back up. That alone was something she could never do. If she was hit like that for no reason there was no way in hell she would be smiling. There was also no way the attacker would have remained free, yet he was back in the same store the next day, acting like nothing ever happened. She began to walk with Naruto a lot after that incident. During that time she had seen some of the nicest people she knew do some awful things to him, and yet despite seemingly everyone hating him, he still smiled. Hey Sakura, do you need something? Naruto's inquisitive voice brought her out of her thoughts. Not really. Why do you ask? She noticed the corners of his mouth began to twitch ever so slightly. Well you were staring at me for about five minutes, and you were smiling the whole time, so I thought that you were going to ask me something. There was that twitch again. What did you think I wanted to ask you? She narrowed her eyes as she realized that Naruto had probably ignored her when she had broken the silence earlier. Well I don't know. A few things come to mind like if I'm also afraid of Zabuza, if Gado is going to send any men, maybe a date when we get back, and something about Sasuke. That's all I could think of you asking. He felt that twitch again as Sakura was oblivious to what he mixed in with the guesses. Processing processing those were his thoughts as he looked at her thinking over what he just said. Well that seems about click wait what a date. Naruto finally let that twitch go and broke out onto a full-blown grin. He chuckled as he ducked under the enraged Kinoichi's fist. She gave it a few more good swings before she finally settled on crossing her arms and muttering under her breath while shooting glares at the still laughing blonde. The date, no. However I will go eat with you at Ichiraku when we get back. Sakura couldn't have been more pleased at his reaction. Their roles changed as she laughed while he tried to splutter out a coherent sentence. On the other hand, Naruto had no idea what to think or say. He had been kidding about the date when she suddenly agreed to it just without using the term date to describe it. He must have looked ridiculous at that point. Here he was, Naruto Uzumaki the one who inherited the powers of the godly Rakuto Senen, and he was there spluttering out incoherent words as the girl of his dreams laughed at his misfortune. The fun was ruined before he could retaliate by the masked Jounin that lead the team. Bakashi had enjoyed the conversation behind him, but he had a question or two for Naruto. Hey Naruto I need to ask you something. Kakashi had lazily tilted his head to look at the genin, and was surprised to see him become slightly tense. Don't ask how, don't ask how, don't ask how Naruto continued to chant his mental prayer as he spoke up. What is it Cyclops Sensei? The Cyclops and every other member of Team 7 sweat dropped as Naruto's infamous nicknaming ability came to play. Kakashi made a note to make their next training session extra difficult for Naruto before he continued. You didn't leave Tsunami and Inari by themselves did you? 
No, I left a few cage bunshin to leave at the house with them. Naruto stated his answer like he knew a few of his cage bunshin could keep half of the world safe. It was confident to a strangely comforting level. Okay. Just checking. He turned his head back to his book to read as they continued walking to the bridge. What happened here? Tazuna slowly swept his shocked gaze across the injured, dying, and already dead bodies of his workers. They had risked their lives to build this bridge, and throughout the whole construction not a single person was injured. Yet now all of them were crumpled heaps that occasionally moaned in pain. No one could see far in the familiarly thick fog that clung to the bridge. They were all on their guards at the side of the beat down before them, but when the same voice echoed from everywhere they were on the brink of insanity from awareness as the genin searched all around them. Even Naruto. Growing on that act again. Well hopefully it doesn't stay that way through this whole fight. The Jounin stared hard into the mist until he could finally make out the silhouette of two people. Several water clones came dashing into sight and surrounded the group of genin that protected his target. So you drug the little brats along to huh? Must really want to see them die. Naruto noticed Sakura tense up slightly when Hizabusa had mentioned them dying. He made a mental note to ask about that later before he turned his attention back to the clones. They each wielded the intimidating executioner's blade and all had death in their eyes. I don't think they're going to die today. At least, not if Naruto and Sasuke have anything to say about it. Kakashi's statement was punctuated by the splashes of several very dead water clones, while Sasuke and Naruto stood in front of Sakura, both of them spinning a kunai on their fingers. Do easy don't you think Sasuke? Naruto didn't bother to face Sasuke and instead stared directly at the two missing Kiri ninja. For once I think I agree with you dope. The Achiha stared at Zabuza's familiar companion, realizing that the now visible hunter nin would probably be his opponent. Naruto was glad he had learned how to switch between his regular eyes and, as he so maturely called them, his ass-kicking eyes. Now that he thought about it, he was going to need a name for these eyes. Maybe when he got home he would try to think of one. Even without his new eyes active, Naruto felt confident that he knew what the next few minutes would bring. Well, Naruto turned out to be damn good at guessing things as he and Sasuke attempted to dodge another Senban barrage. Naruto could have simply repelled all of them, but he didn't want to reveal his eyes yet. After the demon brothers were killed he knew certain people would start to ask questions about how they were taken down so easily. The last thing he needed to do was draw attention to himself by walking around with a dejutsu that was only seen on the Rakuto Senen himself. Naruto winced when he felt the bite of the Senban punching through the skin and plunged into his left tricep. He felt another one cut his cheek while yet another hit him in the chest, several inches from piercing his heart. He did a quick check of his teammate's condition and reached, what he would guess, a medically sound conclusion. He was fucked up. Senbans were sticking out of his back like he was some kind of human pin cushion. His left arm was limp from several meticulously placed senban that temporarily disables whatever limit hits. The paralysis could only be released when the senban were pulled out of the chakra point and the corresponding pressure point. Naruto made his way towards the struggling Ichiha with the hopes of being able to redirect the hits. Naruto stay, out of this. The blue's eyes of the blonde met the red of eyes of the newly awakened Sharingan. Each eye only held two Tamo, but it seemed like everything was trying to move through water from Sasuke's point of view. He tried to stand and was finally able to lift his head to glare at Haku, but only succeeded in opening the way for the three Senban to become embedded in his chest. The Achiha took several instinctive steps back to try and move away from the source of his pain. His Sharingan eyes began to flicker between red and black as the pain caused his knees to buckle beneath him as he slumped to his knees. His eyes were locked onto his own chest, or rather, the three new senbin that joined the other three. The red eyes finally gave way to a solid black dot a strange gurgling noise emanated from the Ichiha's throat before he fell forward onto the cold hard concrete that formed the bridge. The sounds of a girl's screams were overpowered by the bloodthirsty roar. Aku struggled to stand as she peered at the fist that she skewered on. The blonde snarled at her as he ripped his hand out of her chest, leaving behind a nasty, gaping, ragged hole in her chest. The blonde had experienced a complete personality shift once the other boy, Sasuke Chiha, went down. Haku had felt awful for doing that to the poor child, but she had justified the action in her mind by saying that it was what Zabuza Sama would want. She tried to fight against the blonde, god did she try, but it seemed like the genin had released centuries of pent-up rage, hatred, and animalistic ferocity all at once. She had no chance against the onslaught that came in the form of the blonde Kanoha genin. It took several blurred seconds before she found the fist protruding from the back of her body. Haku noticed the edges of her vision had faded considerably, and the black edges threatened to consume her vision. Her knees betrayed her and she collapsed in a heap on the ground. Tabuza Sama Haku fixed her gaze on her lord, the man that saved her from a life of persecution, as he fraught against the copy ninja Kakashi Haddock. A dark and throaty laugh began from her soon-to-be killer. 
SH noticed that his eyes were back to the solid blue. Then a thin circle of black emerged from his pupil and moved to the edges of his eyes. Several more of the black ripples made their way out and finally settled into place after reaching an equal distance in between each one. Haku watched in fascination as three spinning Tomo swirled out of his pupils and settled on the ripple line closest to the pupil. Don't worry about him, that dark laugh sounded so foreign coming from, what she could guess, the usually happy-go-lucky, always chipper and smiling blonde. He produced a sword and silently removed it from the fancy sheath. He will be joining you very soon. He extended his hand and faced the open palm at the back of the completely oblivious Abusa. Bancho Tenen. The former member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Hidden Mist Village, found himself being ripped off the ground as it felt like gravity had suddenly changed its rules and now pulled him sideways into it of down. He caught a flash of metal and was able to see the sword punch through his chest, effectively ending his life. Naruto frowned as he absentmindedly pulled the sword from one body, only to use it to cease the struggles of the girl on the ground next to him. Naruto hated to kill people. He hated it with a passion, yet he was very good at the killing profession. He noticed Sakura was crying at the Ichiha's body. As her tears streamed forward she also tuned the initiative to begin patching the wounds that her limited use of medical ninjutsu would allow. The Sharingan part of Naruto's eyes caught sight of tiny, near-microscopic, movements of the chest to signify that he still drew breath. Naruto felt that pang of loneliness again as the thought of Sakura choosing Sasuke over himself made themselves quite prominent on the forefront of his mind. He watched her put her beautiful face onto Sasuke's chest. His heart nearly crumbled at that sight. However, his heart was saved when she tilted her head to the side and began to listen for a heartbeat. Thump, thump. Sakura let a massive smile cross her weary face. He's alive Naruto. He's alive. Sakura was ecstatic that she had been able to save their comrade's life. His breathing was rapidly returning to normal right before their eyes. Naruto looked up at the pinket and noticed she was looking at him for something. It hit him pretty fast as he could recognize that facial expression and the emotions behind it anywhere, anytime. This was because he had once, and still occasionally did, worn that very same expression. She was looking for acknowledgement and acceptance. That was awesome Sakura-chan. He didn't give his brain time to think as he lunged at Sakura and wrapped her up into a big bear hug. Sakura blushed profusely at the blonde whose arms she was currently in. She was happy that he acknowledged her achievement. For some reason, his acknowledgement of it made the feat even better. She never felt him lift his hand carefully from her and point it behind the at the gathering mob of mercenaries. Shinra Tensei. He disguised the muttering with a series of coughs. He seen the mercenaries fly off the bridge without a sound. Well everyone but Gado was quiet. He screamed for his life as he dangled from the bridge. A fall into the water at that height would be the same as swan diving into concrete. He heard a few footsteps above him and looked at the blonde above him. He immediately began to panic when he seen the contempt in the blue, rippled eyes. Bancho Tenen. The weapons that the fallen mercenaries had dropped floated all around the blonde and pointed directly at Gado's helplessly suspended body. His pleas for mercy fell upon deaf ears. Naruto turned his back to the pathetic thing hanging from the bridge before he spoke once more. Shinra Tensei. The weapons all hit their mark, and several seconds later a splash from below was the only thing to mark Gado's final resting place. Azuna watched the receding figures of Team 7 as he spoke. So what should we name this bridge? The Nari was the one to name the soon-to-be famous bridge. The Great Naruto Bridge. Congratulations on passing the second exam. From now on things are going to get much more difficult for all of you. Naruto tuned out the third Hokage and instead turned his attention to his pink-haired Kinoichi comrade. A lot had changed during the second exam, and Naruto wasn't so sure he actually knew what she was thinking. From her actions during their time in the forest of death, he wasn't sure he knew who she loved anymore. Flashback begins. No one knew what just happened. One minute all three of them were jumping through the trees, and the next minute the air itself seemed to slam into Naruto and send him flying through the forest, breaking trees and branches as he flew. Naruto. Sakura seemed frantic as she called out for the blonde, but the only answer she got was a chilling laugh and a spike of killer intent so massive that it brought her to her knees. She didn't even need to look into the pale woman's face to see her death. Why do that when her death was playing in her very eyes? Tears began to fall uninterrupted as the images engraved themselves on her brain. Bukuku. Don't worry about little Naruto-kun. I'm not going to kill him yet. No, his eyes are much too precious to be wasted like that. His eyes. Sakura and Sasuke's thoughts echoed each other's, but they couldn't dwell on such things when two kunai were thrown directly at their faces. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto had to think quickly. His eyes flared to life, and he pointed a hand at a tree he just passed. Bancho Tenen. The tree didn't budge. 
Instead, Naruto used the tree as the center and focused the gravitational pull on himself. The force of the air bullet was cancelled out, and Naruto soon found himself holding onto a tree branch. Sasuke. The cry rang out loud and clear, the pain in Sakura's voice was evident and pushed Naruto into action. Desperate to reach his team sooner Naruto decided to do something incredibly stupid. After each chakra enhanced jump, he used Shinra Tensei on the tree branch, using his foot as the release point. After three Shinra Tensei jumps he crashed head first into the clearing, where he watched a pale-faced man or woman, he couldn't tell at his angle, sink his or her teeth into Sasuke's neck. He quickly scanned the area for his other teammate, and soon located her. Sakura was holding her side and leaning against a tree, she looked very exhausted and very injured. Each of her legs had several deep gashes that prevented her legs from supporting her weight. Her arms were cut and singed while a single kunai protruded from her shoulder. She was helpless in this situation and could only watch as Sasuke fought a very one-sided battle. The clearing sported several new gashes in the earth and plenty of fresh burn marks, the smell of burning flesh and burnt wood permeated the air in some sort of sick mixture of nature and death. The teeth were removed from Sasuke's neck as the mouth opened so the head could return to its normal position. Sasuke cried out in pain and fell to his knees while trying to cover his neck and tear the new marks out that were causing him such pain. He continued to try both of the actions before his eyes widened. His overly large pupils shrank to almost nothing in an instant, and Sasuke fell face first into the earth and stayed there in an unmoving heap. You fucking team. What did you do to Sasuke? Naruto brought his furious gaze to rest on the eyes of the pale, half-melted face that belonged to what he assumed was a guy. The pale-faced genin licked his or her lips with an unusually long tongue. TSK, TSK Naruto-kun. Why weren't you here sooner when I was giving Sasuke-kun his gift? You're too late to get yours. Maybe another time Kukuku. Still laughing, the pale team sunk into the ground and disappeared from sight. Naruto felt the evil aura and killer intent that flooded the area vanish, along with the strange grass shinobi. Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Eleven more Naruto's poofed into life and set out on their tasks. One went to go gather up Sasuke and check his vitals, while eight more took up watch and disappeared into the leaves. The final two had split up the task of finding somewhere to hide and leapt into the trees before disappearing into the forest in two different directions. The real Naruto quickly made his way to Sakura and began to treat her wounds. The kunai was deeply embedded in her shoulder, the handle being the only exposed part of the weapon. Sakura was breathing hard while she tried to do some basic combat first aid to stop or reduce the amount of blood she was losing from several deep slashes and cuts. Naruto felt like he was being stabbed in the stomach repeatedly as he saw her constantly wincing in pain. Naruto could you please grab my pouch. It should have my medical kit inside. I lost it over in those bushes you came through when we fought whatever that shinobi was. Naruto quickly stood and began to search for the lost pouch. During his search one of his two scouting shadow clones dispelled. The memories flooded his mind and he quickly sorted out what the clone wanted him to see. He grinned at his clone's find and redoubled his efforts to find the pouch. After another two minutes of frustrating searching he threw his hands up and groaned. Tilting his head back he caught sight of glinting metal. Upon closer inspection he realized it was a kunai pinning Sakura's pouch to the tree. He sprinted up the tree, grabbed the pouch, and hurried back to Sakura. She instantly smiled upon his return, and her smile only grew once he produced her pouch. Several minutes later and plenty of tape, gauze, and thread in the case of the shoulder wound, Sakura was able to bear the pain of standing. Naruto had the shadow clone grab Sasuke as he stuck close to Sakura in case she collapsed. Their progress was painstakingly slow, and Sakura kept apologizing for slowing them down. Finally Naruto decided to try something to speed them up. Sakura-chan. The blonde turned his head to face the Kanoichi as they took another quick break. Nani. Sakura turned her head to show that he had her attention. Do you trust me? He fought back the sly grin that threatened to reveal his plans. What kind of question is that? We're teammates, of course I trust you. Why? Sakura still didn't get where he was heading with this. After a few moments of thinking, Naruto smiled and nodded his head. Good. Well I guess we better get going now. Sakura went to stand when she suddenly found herself being swept into a pair of white clad arms. She found herself staring into his blue, rippled eyes. He didn't bother deactivating his eyes since he had an advantage to keep them going. It wasn't like he was losing chakra either. Since his eyes had been changed his new eyes were his natural eyes, so he wasn't using chakra to maintain something natural. She quickly realized that she was getting lost in his deep blue eyes and instead focused on the fact that he was carrying her. Naruto I can walk on my own. This is much faster. Don't worry, you said that you trusted me and I'm not about to betray that trust. So just sit back and enjoy the ride. He gave Sakura a warm smile before Harry focused his attention on jumping through the trees. 
To her credit, she didn't even lose her temper once. She snuggled into his chest and the exhaustion of the fight finally caught up with her. Thank you, Naruto-kun. And flashback. After that Naruto had decided to head for the tower. He found the other scroll they needed and went straight for the tower. They were the first team to arrive. Upon arrival, Naruto sent Sakura and Sasuke to the infirmary. He then found Kakashi in the room assigned to Team 7 and reported the run-in with the grass shinobi. After that, Naruto hadn't seen any of his teammates until today. He had spent most of the time trying to evaluate the relationship between Sakura and himself. The results of said self-evaluation was frustrating and confusing, so he stopped thinking about that. Instead, he took the rest of the time to hone his mastery of his dejutsu. During one of his meditation sessions, he stumbled across another memory of the Rakuto Senen and finally learned the name of his eyes. The sage called them the Eternal Manjikurinigan. Naruto decided that the name was too long and began to think of another. He was still thinking. He let out a frustrated sigh at the confusing thoughts he was having and began to glance around. He noticed that the Suna team didn't have a scratch on them. He felt a strangely familiar pull when his eyes locked with a redhead. It was unsettling thinking that he knew the boy without actually ever meeting him. He gave his head a quick shake and continued to scan the group. His eyes finally settled on Kabuto's back. His previous suspicions were still fresh in his mind. He remembered the cards that Kabuto had and how much information was on them. When Sasuke asked about Naruto, Kabuto produced the requested card. At the angle Naruto had been standing, he was able to see the card before it was revealed. He had quickly snatched the card and burnt it to ensure his secret wasn't revealed. A secret that his teammates didn't know much about. In fact even the third Hokage was still in the dark about it. He had lied to Kakashi when the one-eyed Jounin had confronted him and was still barely maintaining the shroud of secrecy around his eyes. The same shroud that he highly doubted would remain after today was over. For the first match of the preliminary round, we have the sickly Proctor turn to watch the screen roll. Kabuto Yakushi. Yes. Kiba Inuzuka. Naruto grinned. The preliminaries were finally beginning and he wanted to have fun. Naruto was extremely disappointed. He had been matched up against the puppet user from Suna, Kankuro. The fight was fast. Really fast. Naruto had opened with a barrage of wind bullets that were strong enough to punch holes through the puppet. Naruto had quickly followed up by using the bullets for cover to reach Kankuro. After that it was as simple as holding his sword to the boy's throat and it ended the match. He didn't even get to use his eyes. The final lineup was determined by drawing a slip of paper with a number on it. The lineup went as follows. Naruto Uzumaki vs. Kabuto Yakushi. Arano Sabaku vs. Asuka Chiha. Brock Lee vs. Niji Hayuga. Hanada Hayuga vs. Sakura Haruno. Shino Aburam vs. Shikamaru Nara. Sakura had surprised everyone by pulling the win off against the sound Kanoichi. During the whole match she could hear Naruto constantly yelling out his support to her. When she had finally won, Naruto was extremely happy for her. When she got back up by the rest of Team 7, Naruto had shown his joy by wrapping her up in a big hug. She surprised everyone who saw by returning the hug. After that he noticed Sakura was almost always watching him when she thought he wasn't looking. He took note of her behavior and mentally filed it away for later. You have one month to prepare for the finals. Use this time wisely. Dismissed. Naruto walked absentmindedly throughout the village. He had trained from early morning to mid-afternoon, and he was both mentally and physically exhausted. Well, he was exhausted until he noticed Sakura was heading his way. He didn't bother to put his arms by his side and instead kept his hands laced together behind his head, the living embodiment of comfortable at that moment. Hey, Sakura-chan. He heard her footsteps beside him but didn't get an answer. Hey are you okay Sakura-chan? Again no answer. He stopped walking and turned to focus on her and saw the reason she wasn't talking. Sakura sat lost deep in thought about a relationship with her teammates. She had always thought she liked Sasuke, but now that image of perfection lost large chunks every day. She had soon been left with the image of the real Sasuke. The real power-hungry, revenge-driven, uncaring image. She could easily say that she viewed Sasuke as a close friend. Not a crush. She was driven from her thoughts when someone called her name while tapping her shoulder. Reality came rushing back and she found herself standing in front of a concerned Naruto. Hey Sakura-chan, you still alive? He lowered his head to look into her eyes. She felt her cheeks flare to life at the attention he was showing her. Yeah Naruto, I'm fine. Just got lost in thought is all. She gave him the most convincing smile she had and watched as the blonde responded with his own megawatt smile. She felt a warmth spread through her at the sight of his smile. Hey Sakura-chan, you want to come with me to Ichirakus? She was about to accept until she noticed the time. Sorry Naruto I can't today. I've got Jinjutsu training with Kurinai-sensei in 5 minutes. That warm feeling left when his smile dropped slightly. 
Instead she leaned over and kissed Naruto on one of his whisker cheeks. He was absolutely, without a doubt, shocked. Thank you for believing in me Naruto. I'll see you later. With that the pinkette disappeared onto the rooftops, leaving a stunned blonde behind. Sakurichan kissed me Sakurichan kissed me. The smile returned bigger than ever, and the blonde felt energized beyond comprehension. He booked it down the road determined to train until he thought he was ready. One month had come and gone faster than any of the participants could have imagined. After the night Sakura had kissed Naruto's cheek he had disappeared from the village, along with the just recently returned Jureya of the legendary Three Sanin. The blonde and the super pervert hadn't been seen inside Konoha at all that month, and many people had to speculate what was happening. Did Jureya leave and take the boy with him? Did Naruto run from the village, and since he is a Jinchuriki Lord Third was forced to send Jureya? Or is Naruto Uzumaki receiving training from the Toad Sage himself? People could only guess or speculate although option 3 was rapidly gaining popularity. All one needed to justify their reasoning would be found by looking at the rest of Team 7. Sakura Haruno was receiving training from the Jinjutsu master Kurana Yuhi, and she was becoming deadly with it was the rumors going around. Sasuke Chiha was being trained by the one and only copy ninja of Konoha, Kakashi Haddock. Rumor there was Sasuke was learning a very powerful jutsu, but no one knew anything else. The other finalists had trained extra often early hard to grow on their already impressive skills. It was the day of the finals, and yet Naruto was nowhere to be found. Sakura, Sasuke, and Kakashi all searched high and low, but still couldn't find him. Well I guess the dope blew his chance. I'm not going to miss my opportunity though. With that said Sasuke disappeared in a swirl of leaves soon to be followed by Kakashi. Sakura took one last look around his apartment before she turned and closed the door, only one thought weighed heavily on her mind. Where are you Naruto? Everyone was present besides one unpredictable knucklehead ninja named Naruto Uzumaki. He had five minutes to show before he was removed from the tournament. Kabuto was waiting patiently on the field with a smug grin on his face. The other genin, excluding Gara, anxiously scanned the stadium for their friend. It was Gara who surprised everyone by speaking. He's here. True to his statement, the air began to twist in a violent funnel that eventually connected with the ground. The sheer force of the twister was enough to pick up dirt and other items and throw them around the stadium. Finally the twister dispersed in a shockwave of air and revealed two figures. The entrance would have been amazing if the two hadn't begun to talk. See Iro Senen, that's how you make an entrance. The blonde figure looked pretty much the same, except his robe now had orange-tipped black flames along the hem of his cloak. Are you kidding Gaki, it would have been much better if we used Chief Toad. The white-haired man was yelling at the enthusiastic blonde who all but ignored him. With a sigh, Jureya disappeared in a cloud of smoke only to reappear beside the Hokage. The proctor stepped forward and glanced at the blonde. Are you Naruto Uzumaki? The one and only Dadabeo. The mega smile could be seen in the contestant bunker. Okay then let the match he looked at both contestants, begin. He dropped his hand and jumped back. Naruto didn't move, but watched as Kabuto activated chakra scalpels on either hand. He grinned as he pointed at Naruto. Hey you destroyed that card of mine. That wasn't polite. Naruto still didn't flinch as he seemed to be focused on something else entirely. He completely ignored the mindless chatter that came from Kabuto and continued to focus. Finally Kabuto had enough and charged Naruto. Sakura knew what those chakra scalpels could do to you and yelled at the immobile blonde. Naruto watch out. Those cut you from the inside. He didn't even acknowledge the voice and maintained his focus. Just as Kabuto reached him the blonde's hand was suddenly clamped onto Kabuto's forearm and the blonde was already airborne, using Kabuto as a balance and pivot for his motion in air. Naruto's eyes snapped open and a murmur of shock spread throughout the stadium. Jureya sat smirking next to the third Hokage at everyone's reactions. Really Jureya? You taught him that. Lord Third motioned to Naruto as he spoke to his former student. It only took him a week to get to this point. The rest of the time was spent learning that jutsu. Jureya turned his attention back to the field. Kabuto sat staring straight into the frog-like eyes of his opponent. Every move Kabuto made was either dodged or countered by the blonde. Kabuto slashed at his face and missed only to be hit by a blast of chakra-guided air. That is frog kumite. The blonde stood proudly where he was. Kabuto realized that he was getting nowhere fast with attacking. Well, well. You have certainly improved Naruto-kun. If only I had my card to mark your progress, Kabuto smirked while Naruto rolled his eyes. That card held secrets about me that not even the third Hokage knows yet. Along with the fact that it almost revealed who my parents were don't get me wrong, I can't wait to meet my parents, but not because of some stupid card. Well you didn't need to burn it. He smirked even more as he said his next words. I guess that's what happens when you don't have good parents. The hand was around his throat before the air rustled to signify that he moved. Kabuto smiled at how perfected all just went. 
What did you just say? The yellow flashed dangerously red, and a continuous flicker was seen between yellow and red. As much as I'd like to chat, my master ordered me to kill you, so Sasuke-kun wouldn't have to worry about being pursued. Before Naruto could say his question he felt Kabuto's fingertips come to a rest directly over his heart, before moving in an X pattern. Naruto's grip loosened and he stumbled backwards. He stared blankly at Kabuto before a little stream of blood flowed out of his mouth. Kabuto quickly closed the gap and began to slash away. Finally he stopped, turned around, readjusted his glasses, and listened to Naruto's body hit the ground with a satisfied smile. Proctor, Naruto Uzumaki is dead. Naruto floated in the blackness and watched clips of his life go flying by. He seen the picture with Team 7 and tried to grab it only for it to burn up. All around him were memories of pain, loneliness, despair, and hatred. With each memory a hatred to live grew deep within his stomach. Just as he was about to turn away from life a flash of pink caught his eye. Thank you for believing in me. Sakura's words echoed continuously throughout the room. Thank you Naruto-kun. That hatred was now replaced by the love of the pink-haired Kinoichi. Pick his ass Naruto. Shanaro. The preliminary round had brought out a little inner Sakura with that outburst. Suddenly, life didn't seem so bad. His resolve locked into place as he gently rubbed the area she kissed. I live. I live for Sakura-chan. Everyone just stared at the lifeless body of Naruto Uzumaki. They had all heard Kabuto's declaration, but they refused to believe it. Sakura was in tears when she felt a damn burst. Naruto Uzumaki. Don't you dare die and leave me alone with Sasuke. Who else will tease the emo out of him? Who else will play all of the pranks around here? Who else will constantly support the friends you have? And who else will declare their eternal love for me? Sakura finished with tears blinding her. Even Sasuke had silent tears running down his cheeks at the sight of his surrogate brother lying dead in the dirt. Many people in the audience had heard Sakura's outburst, and many began to realize how much of an impact he had around Konoha. Sure he generally made life miserable, but it was a fun carefree kind of miserable. Some even chuckled as they were called the blonde's antics. Sakura never heard anything. All she felt was the hand come to rest on her cheek and the thumb wipe away the tears. Don't worry Sakura-chan. I'll be here to do all of that and more. With a gasp, everyone realized that Naruto was balanced on the railing in front of Sakura. Now please stop crying. I hate to see your tears. She nodded dumbly, and Naruto grinned before he turned his attention to the visibly pale Kabuto. The Buto Yakushi, Naruto began, his voice echoing through the stadium, you have stolen secrets from Konoha that could be the difference of life or death for this village. I have also directly observed you in a meeting with Orochimaru himself. As a witness to these events I stand as a self-made executioner. It doesn't help you that you've already insulted my parents. For these crimes I will follow through on your execution. Still reeling from being exposed as a spy, Kabuto reactivated his chakra scalpels and prepared to finish the job. Naruto's eyes flared to life, and the ripple pattern shot out of his now blue eyes. Three Tomo took up their position on the first ripple, except something else began to happen. Out of his pupil shot three more Tomo that took up positions on the next ripple, directly diagonal to the corresponding Tomo in the first three. The diagonal pattern was set to head towards the edges of his eyes. Kabuto gulped as he took several involuntary steps back. Behold what you tried to expose Kabuto. This is a power that has been unseen since the Rakuto Senen became the Jinchuriki to the Jayubi. Behold the eternal Manjiku Rinnegan. The Yuzumaki stood and lifted his head proudly so all could see. The blonde, now finished with his speech, looked down at the trembling Kabuto. Time to die. Naruto charged the stumbling spy and began to barrage him with a mixture of Tujutsu and Ninjutsu. He formed an Ninjutsu from each of the five different nature manipulations. Kabuto ducked under the hammer fist only to have a third arm smash him in the jaw. Naruto quickly transformed the third arm into a blade and severed the tendons on the inside of Kabuto's knees, forcing the man to a kneeling position. The third arm disappeared and Naruto's right hand transformed into a cannon which he then pointed at the back of Kabuto's head. The Buto Yakushi I give you one more chance. What is Orochimaru planning? Naruto let his aim fall to Kabuto's chest area. I don't know what you're talking about Naruto-kun. Kabuto let out a dark chuckle until he heard Naruto speak. The Sura attack. The cannon fired a ball of energy straight through Kabuto's chest. Before the spy could die, Naruto shifted his hand back and rested it atop the dying man's head. Naruto's fingers curled inwards and he pulled. Kabuto's soul came out with his hand and he quickly absorbed it. He ignored the thud of a body hitting the floor and pointed his cannon at the Kazakiage. What is he? The shot ripped through the robes and chest of the Kazakiage. His skin peeled away at his face, and Hiruzen gasped to see Orochimaru's eyes. Four ninjas suddenly appeared and grabbed onto Orochimaru who then disappeared along with the four others. Through all of this excitement Naruto stood and watched it unfold. When everything had happened Naruto spoke up. 
if it's all the same, may we continue with the exam? A roar of laughter erupted throughout the stadium as everyone began to cheer his name. Naruto. 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 Arano Sabaku vs Asuka Che. The tension in the air was stifling as the two fighters glared at each other, both willing the other to make the first move. Sasuke gladly granted Gara his unspoken wish and charged the Suna Genin. Just as his fist was about to connect the sand rushed to his defense just as Sasuke expected. The soft sand latched onto the fist that hit it and began to swiftly encircle the whole being. Sand Coffin. The voice that spoke it was cold and uncaring. His outstretched hand waiting for his target to be completely encased. Up in the contestant bunker Naruto, Sakura, and the rest of the finalists watched the sand as rapidly surrounded and encased their friend. Sakura was horrified after what she seen that sand do to the sound nin, and her brain was frantically combing over their options. She then heard Naruto snicker and turned on him so she could knock him into next week. That is when she noticed his eyes. Just watch Sakura-chan. He pointed over her shoulder at the massive sand. Sand burial. The sound of splintering wood echoed through the stadium. Realizing his mistake, Gara heard the chirping of a flock of birds behind him. The sand rushed to his defense, but the lightning passed right through the sand like nothing was there. Gara felt a sharp tearing sensation in his shoulder and looked down to find a lightning-covered hand protruding from his right shoulder. Dodori. The cry shot across the cheering audience. Everyone were on their feet as excitement rippled through the air at the display they were just shown. Sasuke did no such celebrating. He felt sand wrap around his throat before it picked him up and launched him into the stadium walls. Gara still stared at his wound in shock, even when the sand enclosed him in a massive cocoon. The cheering stopped and was replaced by a murmur of curiosity. The eye that floated above the cocoon was unnerving to many and was faced in the direction that Sasuke had been thrown in. The eye was locked onto the crater in the wall. Sasuke you have to stop this now. Naruto's voice rang clear throughout the stadium and many people dismissed his fears. The eye turned towards Naruto for an instant before movement in the wall recaptured its attention. Sasuke pulled himself out and leaned against the wall, bent over and spitting out blood. He knew he had a concussion from slamming into the wall that hard but instead focused on this final move. He had just enough chakra for it and he was determined to make it count. He took off at a run, hugging the wall, as he built up speed. The whole time he concentrated chakra into the palm of his hand. He was already a blur when the lightning sparked to life and the blur twisted towards the cocoon. The rapidly approaching figure was met with spikes of sand that were easily dodged before the blur stopped, becoming Sasuke once again. His hand was embedded in the cocoon and he felt something moving about before a large claw-like hand burst out of the cocoon, knocking Sasuke out and pinning him to a wall. The hand was left there and a new one took its place. Shukaku. The one-tailed demon is released. Naruto ran and jumped onto the railing before he turned and faced the other finalists. Stay out of this fight. You will only end up dying. With that he jumped into the arena just as the cocoon broke apart and formed a tail on Gara. The crazed genin spun around to face the interruption. Once his eyes locked onto the ripples in Naruto's blue eyes he began to salivate and he smiled like a crazy man smiles at his next victim. You. I've been waiting for you. The voice sounded half demonic and the star-shaped eyes held Naruto's gaze. Shukaku release this boy from your control. Naruto's voice held a commanding tone and signaled no fear towards the transforming boy. The genin brought his one free hand up like he was thinking before he smiled. No. Like a dam had broken, massive amounts of sand rushed at the transforming boy and attached to his body. Naruto watched as the sand grew higher and higher before it filled out into Shukaku's form. The body solidified and finally the mighty demon was free. Screams ripped through the air as people tried to escape only for a dome of sand to spread out and encase the stadium. I want all of these people here to watch as you fail to protect them. Then they all get to die. Shukaku's laugh was full of amusement at his own plan. He laughed even harder when the blonde at his feet sighed and began walking away from him. Shukaku watched on in amusement as the boy stopped and slammed his hands together. The following words immediately stopped the demon's laughter and replaced it with fear. Guchius. Jito Mezo. The ground began to rumble, and a massive statue began to rise up from the ground. Its eyes were blindfolded and it roared at Shukaku. The demon nearly trembled in fear. What are you doing kid? Shukaku took several instinctive steps back as he tried to put more distance between him and the statue. I'm going to seal away your chakra until you give total control over to the child. With that Naruto made a hand seal, and a blue alpha surrounded Shukaku. The demon watched as his own red chakra was pulled into the open mouth and began to panic. He finally cried out. Okay. You win. The blue aura faded and beneath the blindfold, one eye was halfway open. I guess you really are the next Rakuto Senen. Everyone was dumbfounded to hear that statement from one of the legendary Biju. Did Naruto really just beat a tailed beast? 
True to his word, the sand fell away and Gara's weakened form began to fall. Bancho Tenen. Gara felt himself get pulled into the open hand of Naruto Uzumaki. He couldn't help but think, is this how it ends? He felt the claw-like hands on his stomach twist, and it was like a huge weight was lifted from Gara's shoulders. What did you just do? Gara gazed at the blonde with curiosity. I sealed away Shukaku. If you ever need him his chakra is still there, but now you must voluntarily relinquish control for him to take over. Naruto smiled at the red head, but before he could say any more Baki appeared and grabbed Gara. Gara was about to protest when they disappeared. But Naruto had heard Gara's last words. Thank you Naruto Uzumaki. You know what sucks about this whole thing. What could possibly suck? You've made it so that people don't actively beat you and call you a demon child. I say again what could possibly suck. I didn't get to kick the team's ass. That's because he was hospitalized with a major concussion. Let's also not forget that the hand pinning him down had been constricting the entire time, so his chest and ribs are seriously damaged. Good point Sakurichan well guess I'll just kick his ass when he gets out. Naruto adopted his smile once again as him and Sakura walked down the street. Naruto Uzumaki you are an unbelievable baka. Sakura mumbled into her palm which was pressed firmly to her face in light of Naruto's latest stupidity. Naruto just chuckled and continued walking. He examined his walking companion out of the corner of his eyes. Ever since her motivational speech at the Chunin exams, she had spent a lot more time with him. Not that he was complaining it just seemed out of character for her. He did a mental shrug and kept walking. He was about to ask her something when his super pervert of a teacher landed in front of him. Hey Gaki pack your bags. Jureya's eyes lingered on Sakura's slim figure. Oh she will be worth researching when she gets older. Maybe when we get back. What for Iro Senen? I told you not to call me that. As for your question, we are leaving on a two or three year training trip. We need to get you ready for them. Naruto knew this had been coming and dropped his hands from their relaxed position. Sakura's head was reeling with questions. How long do I have? The blonde looked close to depressed. He didn't want to leave now considering everything with Sakura, but he had no choice. 30 minutes. See you at the front gate. The pervert disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Well Sakura-chan I guess this is goodbye for two years, Sakura gave Naruto a hug before he too vanished. He knew he had to leave then otherwise it would become too hard to leave. Front gate. Naruto was beside Jiraiya as they exited Konoha. They both walked in a different kind of silence. Jiraiya was quiet as he planned what they would do for the next two years. Naruto walked silently out of a growing depression. Leaving now meant Sakura had two years to build a relationship with Sasuke. Naruto knew he had lost. At least, he thought that until a familiar voice rang out. Naruto wait. The blonde's ear perked up and be twisted around to see Sakura come up to them. She couldn't stop the blush from growing and decided to act quickly. Sakura-chan what are you? His question was cut off by her lips. The boy was shocked to the point of immobility as he felt her soft lips against his. She pressed a little harder before she pulled back to look into his wide eyes. I know you've always loved me, and I know this is a little late, but I want you to know that I am waiting for you. For now that kiss will have to do. The shell-shocked Jenin snapped out of his comatose-like state and nodded while smiling his biggest most heartwarming smile. Goodbye Naruto-kun. And just like that the pinket was gone. Naruto heard Jiraiya snicker and turned around. Well well. It looks as though someone just had their first kiss. Naruto let the realization sink in before he shouted one word that was loud enough for the whole village to hear. Yada aya. To Naruto. Hey Naruto it's been a few weeks. I already miss you. Life has been way too quiet without you here. Our friends still don't know about us though I kind of figured you should announce it with me. Also everyone is still talking about someone shouting yada loud enough for the whole village to hear. I'm so glad I wasn't next to you when you did that. Sasuke has nearly made a dull recovery, but Lee was hurt really bad in a recent mission. He still hasn't woken up and it has been a week. I hope to hear from you soon. Love. Sakura. The Sakura-chan. It's awesome to hear from you. Life has been really boring without you here. Also good call with the announcement he. I can't wait to see you again. Hiro Senen has been researching at every stop we made. The damn pervert is going to get us both killed. I hope Lee recovers soon. I'm not supposed to tell you but our next stop is in Suna. Maybe I'll get to see Gara. That would be awesome. Tell the team that I can't wait to kick his ass. I love you Sakura-chan, now and always Dadabeo. Well I gotta go. Hope this gets to you soon. Love Naruto. Dear Naruto. Lee's condition has gotten much worse. The poison is slow moving and is damaging his nervous system. Our medical staff can't cure it, so Lord Third is sending Kakashi, Sasuke, Kiba, and me out to find and retrieve Lady Tsunade. I'm so excited to meet her. I wonder if she will take me on as her apprentice. Well anyway Sasuke can't wait to put you in your place as he says. 
Love. Sakura. The Sakura-chan. I had my first encounter with Sasuke's brother. You can't tell him that I ran into him. He will know when the time comes. Good luck on your mission. Well I should be saying good job on the successful mission. News spreads fast, and everyone is talking about how a team of Konoha Shinobi convinced Tsunade-sama to come back. Love. Naruto. The Naruto. The he left Sasuke left. He was acting so strange I should have noticed. I I should have stopped him. He injured a lot of our friends. Four sound shinobi came for him, but he killed them. He left and and oh god it's just so horrible. Izuma and Kitetsu were both injured trying to stop him. The night he left he he tried to kill me. He kept talking about severing all bonds and and. He's going to kill you. I heard him say that after he stabbed me. I'm writing to you from the hospital. Please be careful. Love. Sakura. The Naruto. It has been several months since your last letter. I'm starting to get concerned. I've been training under Tsunade-sama in medical ninjutsu. It turns out I'm a natural at it. Please write back Naruto I'm worried about you. Love. Sakura. The Naruto. I have terrible news. El Lord Third is dead. Sasuke and Orochimaru attacked last night. Orochimaru erected a barrier and left Sasuke to fight us off. Sasuke has become so strong it's not human he is still after you. Please be careful. Love. Sakura. Sakura gazed at the last letter Naruto had sent two years ago. Tsunade had been initiated as the fifth Okage, and Sakura had been busy making her mark in the field of medicine. She wore her regular skin-tight black shorts underneath her usual skirt with her red top, accentuating her shoulder-length pink hair, think Shippuden Sakura. She was currently on her way to meet Tsunade to see what she was called for. She tore her gaze away from the letter and placed it in her tool pouch for safekeeping. She let out a sad sigh as she climbed the stairs to the Hokage's office. Damn paperwork. Crash, damn desk. Sakura shook her head and opened the door to see Tsunade's desk was broken in half, and paperwork was everywhere. Shizun looked more shocked than Tsunade. Shizun you realize that the last stack of papers you just put on here just broke my desk right? Shizun nodded dumbly while gazing at all of the fluttering papers. Are you trying to assassinate me Shizun? Cause if your paperwork is a cruel and sick way of doing it. Sakura decided to clear her throat to announce her presence. Tsunade shocked Sakura by crossing the distance in the blink of an eye. Let's talk on the roof. Sakura nodded and followed her teacher to the roof. Sakura was still puzzled by the summons. It was obvious that this wasn't a mission, so that could only mean it was a request that was personal in nature. They finally reached the roof, and Tsunade began to pace while thinking of what to say. What is it Tsunade-sama? Sakura was slightly concerned about her teacher, but Tsunade replied without thinking. It's about Naruto. Right away Tsunade knew she had to keep talking when Sakura's expression became Philex with concern. He is coming home in a few days. He is also bringing some people that well I don't know what to think about it. You try to figure it out. Tsunade huffed as she dug into her pocket and shoved a letter into Sakura's waiting hands. She skimmed over it and her breath caught in her throat. He was coming home. Dear Sakura-chan. I'm so very sorry that I haven't responded to your letters. I have made friends with a group of former enemies so I've been training with them. One even has the Rinnegan like me. The group's name is the Akatsuki. They were former Bijuu hunters and one still is. However he left when they agreed to come with me. Anyways I'm on my way back as I write this, so expect me soon. Love. Naruto, the new Rakuto Snin, that's what they call me. It's so awesome Dadabeo. It has been three days since Naruto sent that letter. It now marks the third day that Sakura was found waiting near the gate, anxious for her well her boyfriend to come home. This behavior was once considered normal for the Pinket, but ever since she began training under Tsunade, she had developed into a strong and confident shinobi. Many people would hardly agree with the strong part of that statement. So, considering who she has become, this behavior was looked upon as quite strange for the girl. Hey Sakura. Still waiting. She turned to the sound of Izuma's voice. He looked at her with the tiniest of traces of sorrow. He was sad that the girl kept waiting after her shift at the hospital was over. She was waiting for someone that could show up anywhere between now and next month. Still he tried his best to keep her entertained. His partner was still in therapy from his injuries. That run in with Sasuke had nearly cost them their lives. Yeah. I know that he will be back soon. I don't know why I do, but that doesn't change the fact that I do. How about you? How are you and Kitetsu doing? Sakura remembered how badly wounded those two had been. After she was patched up those two had been rushed in for emergency treatment. I'm a lot better thanks to you. I still can't thank you enough for helping me when those complications arose. As for Kitetsu, he has definitely seen better days, but he is a lot better than he was right after that Chidori was rammed through his stomach. Hopefully he'll be out of therapy soon. Izuma didn't notice he was rubbing his arm where the bone had been snapped. 
he still felt a shiver run down his spine when memories of the bone jutting out of his skin would pop into his mind. The boy had been ruthlessly efficient. Well that's good to hear. Sakura continued talking and was too absorbed in the conversation to notice the group of people coming into view. It wasn't until Azuma suddenly smiled and pointed behind that she turned towards the gate. In the distance she seen several figures all led by two people. As the group came into view Sakura smiled at the sight of the wild, untamed blonde hair and the spiky white hair that the two people sported. Naruto. Seriously how far away is this place? Adair if you don't shut up I'm going to Shinra Tensei your ass back to Iowa. Naruto had just about enough of Dadera's bitching and moaning, which had started back at the border of the fire country. He was very happy that they had all joined his cause, but even his patience has a breaking point which Dadera was fast approaching. Whatever. The other blonde shrugged and continued walking. Nagato sighed at Dadera's actions. He had long become used to this kind of behavior from the explosives expert. He went back to thinking about his decision to join his long-lost cousin in achieving his goals. Their goals were somewhat the same. Collect Bijuu Chakra. However Naruto wanted the Bijuu to volunteer, and he only took a fourth of the Bijuu's chakra. He had originally joined to trick the blonde and extract the Kaiubi, but over time his plan crumbled as the young man gave him no opportunities to carry out his plan. He was also surprised at how successful his method was working so far. They had been able to collect chakra from the Hachibi, the Rakubi, the Nibi, and the Sambi otherwise known as Jayuki, Seiken, Matatabi, and Asobu. He also had already obtained some of Shukaku's chakra. Once inside the statue, Naruto let the clone of the Bijuu grow out of the chakra that they had. The plan was so simple, obviously created with little thought or planning, yet the perfect person needed to pull it off was leading the effort. Thank God we're finally there. Dadera's outburst jogged Nagato from his thoughts, and he looked up to see the walls of Konoha looming ahead. He was relieved to see the end of their travels was in sight. Naruto had seen two people by the gate, but from this distance he couldn't make them out. One was standing and was clearly talking to the one that was seated. He could only assume that the seated one was either Izuma or Kitetsu, but he couldn't make out what they looked like yet. The standing one was clearly a female if the long legs were any kind of a giveaway. Once they got closer he seen the sitting one point at his group. He could finally tell that it was Izuma yet the other person had their head done, so he couldn't guess who she was based on her hair color. As soon as Izuma pointed the girl's head snapped up and a massive grin spread across Naruto's face. Pink hair. They were close enough now where Naruto could see the joy-filled smile on her face, and his grin grew into a full-blown smile. He picked up his pace as he approached the gate and was now in a brisk walk. He was within 10 yards of the gate when Sakura ran out and caught him in a hug. He quickly wrapped his arms around her and pulled her as close as he could. Naruto was now a head taller than Sakura and was much more muscular than he was when he left. He still sported that lean figure, but his muscles were very clearly defined and Sakura could feel them ripple underneath his robes. The boy sported the same clothes he did in the Chunin exams. Sakura remembered how Naruto explained that his clothing and weapons were made to grow for the user as they grew. The magatama on his chest were still visible for all to see, and he now sported two tattoos, one on each wrist, that Sakura instantly recognized as sealing kanji. She also noticed that Naruto now kept his eyes on and didn't even bother to try to hide them. Naruto cut her observations short when he bent down slightly and captured her lips with his own. She melted against his body and returned the kiss with all of the built-up emotions from over the years. Well Naruto how kind to introduce us before you go off and make out with your girlfriend. Kissum said with his shark-like grin that was almost always on the man's face. Yeah. Why don't you stop tongue-fucking your girlfriend long enough to give us some goddamn introductions. Hayden stated which transformed Naruto's embarrassed and blushing face into one of annoyance. Seriously Hayden shut the fuck up. There is a lady present. Naruto yelled at the scythe-wielding man. Hypocrite. Dadera masked his response quite unsuccessfully with a cough. Naruto glared at the group behind him. Most were grinning while a few looked fairly amused. One looked indifferent. He spotted Jureya scribbling notes in his damn research notes. Sakura this is the Akatsuki. Akatsuki this is Sakura. There you go. Introduce yourselves later. Naruto picked Sakura up bridal style and disappeared, leaving the Akatsuki to be processed with Jureya's help. Naruto you need to see the Hokage first. Report in before you do anything else. Sakura was back on her own two feet and had her hands resting on her hips in annoyed stance. Naruto gave in but grumbled as they walked. He noticed the villagers mostly hated him still, that much was obvious by the glares he was all too used to. What surprised him was the approving looks he occasionally got. It puzzled him because he had never been on the receiving end of that kind of emotion when he interacted with the villagers. They finally reached the steps that lead up to the Hokage's office when he noticed the vaguely familiar face carved into the Hokage monument to signify the fifth Hokage. 
He was still racking his brain to think of where he knew that face from when he threw open the office door. He immediately recognized the woman behind the desk. You. Naruto pointed at her in shock which was met by a look of amusement. Yurtsune I always called you Bachan. The tick mark on her forehead showed annoyance at the nickname, but she just ignored it. Yes, Gaki. I am Tsune Senju. The familiarity between the two threw Sakura off. Wait you two know each other, the pink-haired Kinoichi was clearly shocked. Yeah. To make a long story short, she healed me after some training went wrong, and Irosenen was off doing his research. Naruto returned to his normal attitude and spoke like he knew Tsune all of his life. Well botch and I have plans so I thought I would stop by and check in. See ya. Naruto grabbed Sakura again and disappeared in another cloud of smoke. I guess I can put off his test for a day. Bakashi you're dismissed. After Naruto had stopped by Ichirikas for an ungodly amount of ramen, Sakura found herself following Naruto to the top of the fourth Hokage's head. He took a deep breath and looked out over the village from his favorite childhood spot. I'm home everybody. He spoke quietly, almost too quiet for Sakura to hear. If she wasn't next to him she would have missed his words. After a few minutes spent in silence Naruto turned his smile on Sakura. I've missed you so much Sakura-chan. It was hard being out there without you. His hand encased her own as he spoke. His words were filled with the love that he had been forced to contain for so long. Sakura smiled and hugged the blonde while she spoke. I thought of you every day, Naruto. I missed you, but the letters helped. But when they stopped coming I was terrified that something happened to you. Sakura felt the pain and uncertainty she had felt as the memories came back to her. Like a floodgate it opened, everything came pouring out. And when Sasuke left he he stabbed me in my own bed. The look in his eyes so cold cold and filled with hatred. But that wasn't the worst part. When I screamed my parents came in and he he, the tears that were already running only intensified. He cut them down. Right in front of me. He killed them like they were animals. Sakura fell silent and let her tears speak her pain for her. Naruto lowered both of them until they were sitting on the rocky head underneath them. He let her cry and ran a comforting hand up and down her shaking back. They sat like that for the longest time, even after her tears dried up. As Naruto sat and comforted the love of his life, he felt like he was ready to find and kill Sasuke at that very second. When she told him how he killed her parents, his eyes had flashed to blood red before returning to the calming blue. The night was growing late, and Naruto realized it was time to go home. He picked up Sakura once again and carried her back to his place. He had just began to turn the handle when she spoke again. Oh and Naruto the door opened and he stepped in before he noticed that his apartment was being lived in. I I kinda moved in. My home held nothing but pain and sorrow, so I moved somewhere that reminded me of happy memories. She smiled sheepishly as Naruto processed what she said. Sakura-chan is living with me now he turned towards her and, once he seen her smile, he nodded as all of his questions melted away. Sakura helped Naruto unpack, and he quickly resettled into his, correction there, apartment. They were soon getting ready for bed when Naruto grabbed a spare pillow and blanket and began to head for the door. Where are you going? Sakura's tired voice made him turn around. Well I thought that since you have the bed that I would be taking the couch. Naruto watched as she chuckled quietly before she scooted against the wall and patted the bed next to her. No silly. This is your room and your bed. You can sleep here with me. Naruto was shocked for a moment as he let the word sink in. A smile soon crossed his lips, and he put the blanket and pillow back before he climbed into bed and pulled the covers over both of them. She turned her back to him and began to fall asleep. Feeling brave, Naruto turned towards her and put his arm over her. He was shocked once again when Sakura closed the distance and snuggled into his chest before sleep claimed her. Happy at these turn of events, Naruto smiled and fell asleep with the love of his life in his arms. I'm home. Sakura woke to something warm around her waist, and she felt heat radiating out of the object her back was pressed against. Not the sweating on a hot summer day kind of heat, but a comforting heat that seemed to make her want to delve closer to the source. She sighed happily and made an effort to get closer to the heat, only to hear a soft chuckle behind her. Memories of last night came flooding back just as she was getting ready to punch the chuckling man behind her. Looks like somebody is finally awake. His slight laughter and speaking to her all made his chest rumble, and she relaxed even further against it. Nope. You're imagining things. Now go back to sleep. Sakura closed her eyes as she mumbled her tired thoughts to Naruto before her eyes closed again. Naruto looked at the alarm and sighed. Six o'clock. He remembered Kakashi waking him up earlier that morning, saying that Tsunade wanted to see them by noon at the latest. They still had six hours of anything before the meeting. Shrugging, Naruto closed his own eyes once again and pulled Sakura close to him before falling asleep again. Naruto's dream. Daddy, mommy won't let me go the park without you or my big brother, but he's too busy. Can you take me? Please. 
The six-year-old girl looked at Naruto with her best puppy dog eyes. Her pink hair flowed down to just below her shoulders, and her emerald eyes practically begged him to agree. She was the spitting image of her mother. Okay Haruko. Let's go. He took his daughter's small hand in his own larger palm and began to walk towards the park. The little girl skipped while humming a little tune to herself. Naruto stared at his own face up on the Hokage monument and a feeling of pride washed over him. He got the woman of his dreams, he achieved his goal of becoming the Hokage, and he finally brought peace to the shinobi world. Naruto sighed contently in his sleep and unconsciously pulled his girlfriend's sleeping form closer. Sakura's dream. She was pinned to the bed with him on top of her and his arms on either side to form a primitive cage that held her in the one spot. His blue eyes were absolutely enchanting to her and she felt herself being lost in their depths. She gladly surrendered control over to the blonde-haired man above her as he kissed her passionately. The lust in each kiss was like an aphrodisiac to Sakura and she gladly returned his kisses with equal intensity. They broke the kiss only so he could lift her shirt over and off her shoulders before they once again lip-locked in a battle for dominance. His rough hand groped her through her lacy bra and the sensations caused by his hand caused her to moan into the next kiss. Still unsatisfied, he practically ripped her bra off and tossed the scraps across the room before he leaned back to take in the sight he had longed to see. Sakura squirmed as the unsatisfied need continued to build up in the pit of her stomach. Naruto please she practically shouted out in pleasure when his mouth replaced his hand in the task of exploring her breasts. While his mouth was busy he continued to run his hands all along Sakura's body in an attempt to memorize every square inch of her perfect body. When his hands were finished exploring her upper body, he began to run his hands up her legs in a sweet and torturous manner. He moved his mouth over to give the twin the attention it deserved as his hands. Beep beep beep. Sakura shot over Naruto's body and smashed the alarm clock along with the table it was resting on. She let out a frustrated sigh as her dreams were interrupted yet again by the alarm. She noticed Naruto was up to and her face flushed at the memory of what he was doing to her and her dreams came flashing to the front of her mind. Naruto sat up and stretched, unknowingly giving Sakura a damn good show. Oh yeah. He has definitely grown up. You would never see that kind of build on a boy that's for sure. Shanrao. Sakura grinned at her inner self's approval and went back to staring at her boyfriend's body. Once he stood up she sported a full-on blush. Naruto stood and walked towards the closet in only his boxers. She was barely hanging on to her self-control after that dream and Naruto parading his perfect body around wasn't helping one bit. She ran her gaze up and down his toned body and felt that control rapidly slipping away. See something you like. Her head snapped up and she noticed a smug smile on his face. He slowly and deliberately pulled his robes closed while making as much of a show as he could out of it. Naruto Yuzumaki you are nothing but a big tease. Sakura pouted as she crossed her arms in mock anger. She suddenly felt a hot breath on the back of her neck that caused a pleasant shiver to run through her body. Oh I beg to differ. I will always deliver. He leaned even closer and whispered in her ear. No matter what the situation is. Then as fast as the warm tingle had appeared it vanished just as fast. Sakura let out a shaky sigh and tried to calm her overloaded nerves. Every part of her was hyper aware of the blonde in the bathroom. The sound of the shower starting brought more dirty images to her mind. She grabbed a pillow and screamed into it with the hopes of venting some of the sexual frustration as anger. It seemed to work too. She felt much better as she pulled the pillow away. That newfound calmness vanished when she felt cold steel on her throat. Do exactly as I say. Naruto walked out of the bathroom and glanced over at the empty bed. He heard a noise in the kitchen and went to see if Sakura was cooking. He came into his the kitchen and his thoughts were confirmed at the sight of Sakura bustling around the small kitchen with multiple cooking utensils in hand. Something seemed off though. She looked concerned and a little frightened. Hey Sakura is everything alright? He watched her lift her head with a smile that was quickly replaced by one of panic as her eyes widened at something behind him. He felt something pierce the flesh on his back and continue its destructive path until it punched its way out of his chest. Naruto looked down to see the top part of a sword protruding from his chest. Sakura's scream made him slowly lift his head to find her covered in his blood. He wanted to comfort her, but all that he could do was gurgle and cough up his own blood. You were always the dope Naruto. Now I'm going to make sure you lose everything. The blade was ripped from his chest and a foot kicked his heavy and limp body into his table, causing it to break. He watched her dimming eyes as Sasuke grabbed Sakura by the throat and lift her, so she was staring into his now changed Sharingan. She was looking directly at the Manjiku Sharingan. A few seconds later she broke out into a heavy sweat and Sasuke tossed her into the wall like a piece of trash. Tsa dot dot su dot dot ki. The blonde was weak, but he forced the name out. Said man flipped Naruto over with his foot and raised his foot. Thus die you fucking demon. The foot came down hard on his face and the blonde blacked out. 
Sasuke breathed in a nice deep breath as he felt the bonds he had to these two snap. Two down, one to go. He pulled up a chair and waited for the inevitable arrival of the last person on his list. Naruto. Sakura. Are you in there? Kakashi opened the front door and walked in casually. I actually beat you guys to the Hokage's office. What's up with that? He scanned the apartment until he noticed a foot just barely visible on the kitchen floor. He remained calm but pulled his headband up to activate his Sharingan. He reached the kitchen door and entered the room as he quickly ducked. Sakura was huddled in a corner whispering into herself incoherently as she stared at Naruto's still body. Kakashi was about to react when he noticed a presence behind him, but didn't have time as a lightning-covered hand tore through his shoulder, destroying a lung in the process. Hinda ironic huh? You taught me the move that is killing you. The hand was pulled from Kakashi's body, and the silver-haired Jounin collapsed to the floor and remained still. The Ichiha turned his hateful eyes toward Sakura and spoke. Go and tell what has happened here before my mercy runs out and you join them. Sasuke then disappeared in a burst of lightning, leaving the emotionally broken Sakura to do her job. That's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed this. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe. And don't check out author of this fanfic. Thanks for watching.